Janitor or assassin? China's AI satellite rewrites the orbital narrative. Why did the cleaner become a threat? Early morning, January 1, 2026, a long March 7A carrier rocket successfully lifted off from the Wenchang spacecraft launch site, placing the first AI autonomous maintenance module for Phase 2 of China's Tiandong space station into orbit. A subsequent technical bulletin released by officials clarified that this module is equipped with a new generation of deep learning recognition systems capable of millisecond-level space debris identification and capture. It can precisely handle space debris ranging from 1 cm to 1 m in diameter, significantly enhancing the safety of the space stations in orbit operations. However, just 24 hours later, on January 2, the U.S. Space Force released a special white paper via its official website and a simultaneous press conference. The document pointedly accused this AI maintenance module of possessing rapid orbit changing and precision control capabilities, presenting a potential risk of being retrofitted as an anti-satellite weapon. It directly linked the module to great power space deterrence and called on NATO member states to immediately initiate upgrade plans for satellite defense systems and build a cross-regional space early warning network. Can you believe it? An environmental tool designed to solve the global space debris crisis was labeled a war threat in the blink of an eye. This isn't the plot of a sci-fi movie. It is the reality unfolding right now. The super vacuum and the speed of light. In truth, the core principle of this AI satellite isn't hard to grasp. Imagine it as a super-intelligent space vacuum cleaner custom-made for the space station, except instead of suction, it relies on an intelligent capture system composed of high-definition optical sensors, LiDAR, and flexible robotic arms. Its most impressive feature is its millisecond-level reaction speed. Humans take about 300 milliseconds to blink once. This AI module, from detecting space debris, identifying its size and trajectory, to locking onto the target and maneuvering the robotic arm to capture it, takes only about 50 milliseconds. That is six times faster than a blink. More critically, the trash it deals with isn't paper scraps or dust on the ground, but space fragments hurtling at 28,000 kilometers per hour. What does that speed mean? It's equivalent to flying 7.8 kilometers per second, nearly eight times faster than a rifle bullet, approximate one kilometer per second. Even an aluminum fragment the size of a fingernail carries enough impact force to pierce a satellite's protective hull. To precisely grab fragments of varying sizes and erratic trajectories in this extreme high speed, zero gravity environment is technically far more difficult than standing next to a high speed train moving at 300 km per hour and catching a dart thrown at you with your bare hands. It requires not just AI predictive precision but microsecond-level manipulation and anti-interference capabilities from the robotic arm. Even more disruptive to industry norms is that this AI module is not just a precise executor, but a space dispatcher with independent decision-making capabilities. It can autonomously analyze the diameter, mass, and trajectory of every piece of space debris and accurately predict their movement paths for the next 72 hours. Based on this, it assigns threat priorities. For example, prioritizing high-risk fragments over 10 cm in diameter that have trajectories highly overlapping with the Tiangong station or other spacecraft, before dealing with low-threat microdebris. Crucially, it is equipped with an inter-satellite link communication system, allowing it to share data in real-time with the Chinese space station and other observation satellites to collaboratively plan the optimal cleaning route. It can even dynamically adjust its operation sequence based on debris density. This means it has completely broken free from reliance on ground control. In the space environment, transmitting a command from the ground to low Earth orbit, LEO, takes at least 0.12 seconds. This seemingly short latency, in the face of debris moving at 7.8 km per second, is enough to cause capture failure or even a collision. This fully autonomous mode not only avoids latency risks but increases cleaning efficiency several times over. Before this, humanity could only passively avoid space debris, maneuvering satellites to dodge, but could never actively clean it up in bulk. 
The emergence of this AI module marks the moment humanity truly gains the ability to proactively tackle space debris, representing not just a breakthrough for China, but a milestone for humanity's response to the space environment crisis. The Double Standard, Hero vs. Villain However, U.S. accusations have complicated matters. Let's discuss why the West holds such hostility toward this. Space Janitor The cognitive bias behind it and what it means for humanity's future in space. First, look at the European case. As early as 2019, the European Space Agency, ESA, launched the E.Deorbit project related to the Remove Debris mission, the world's first technology demonstration for active space debris removal. In a core test, the ESA team successfully developed a specialized space, Harpoon, and via ground remote control, used it to precisely pierce and capture a simulated aluminum alloy target that replicated real satellite parts. At the time, mainstream tech media, including Nature Astronomy and Space News, covered this extensively, universally praising it as opening a new path to solving the space jump crisis. The European Aerospace Industry Association even listed it as the breakthrough space technology of the year. No media or institution linked it to attack weapons. Instead, they called for global cooperation on such tech. Now look at the global distribution of space debris. According to the latest statistical report released by the U.S. Space Surveillance Network, SSN, at the end of 2025, there are over 34,000 trackable items currently in orbit, with over 23,000 being high-risk fragments larger than 10 centimeters. Breaking down the sources. China accounts for 40% due to early launches and satellite retirements. The U.S. follows closely with 27.5%. Russia slash USSR legacy debris makes up 25.5%, and the remaining 7% comes from Europe, India, and others. Critically, these figures do not include micro debris smaller than one centimeter, conservatively estimated at over 100 million pieces, which possess equally destructive power. This data clearly shows that space debris is not one country's problem, but a crisis for all. In fact, the US and Europe have been pursuing similar cleaning tech. The German Aerospace Center tested laser nudging in 2023, and NASA partnered with private companies in 2024 to develop space debris capture nets. Commentary Why is ESA's harpoon seen as progress, while China's AI module is a threat? Behind this double standard lies a deep-seated Western prejudice against China's aerospace development. The debris crisis is imminent. A collision with a blueberry-sized fragment in Elio hits like an anvil drop. Once Kessler syndrome is triggered, Elio could become unusable. Refusing cooperation while fear-mongering only exposes all of humanity to the risk of space traffic paralysis. The real militarization, Starlink and hegemony. Looking at the U.S. itself, its militarization of space has long exceeded defensive needs. The most typical example is the SpaceX-led Starlink program. By the end of 2025, the program had launched over 9,000 LEO satellites, completing the deployment of nearly 70% of the global LEO communications network. More notably, a U.S. Space Force safety report from the first half of 2025 revealed that this Starlink Constellation performed 144,404 collision avoidance maneuvers in just six months, averaging nearly 800 per day. Behind this data is the hidden danger of space traffic congestion caused by Starlink's overly dense deployment to seize orbital resources, yet the U.S. has never faced international condemnation for this. Furthermore, beneath Starlink's civilian cloak lies a military core. Its derivative, the Star Shield program, directly converts commercial satellites into military platforms. In the Russia-Ukraine conflict, Starshield, satellites not only provided all-weather battlefield communications for Ukrainian forces, but also assisted in precision targeting and even participated in jamming Russian satellite signals. Beyond its own militarization, U.S. space cooperation with allies is chaotic. According to a 2025 NATO space cooperation assessment, there is still no dedicated coordination post between the U.S. Space Force and European Command. Intelligence sharing between allies suffers from an average four-hour delay, 
far exceeding the timeliness required for battlefield intel. Regarding funding for satellite defense upgrades, the U.S. demanded the EU cover 60% of R&D costs while refusing to share core technology, leading to resistance from multiple nations. In joint space exercises, technical mismatches between U.S. and European satellites have repeatedly led to data sinking failures. Commentary The U.S. militarizes its own satellites while criticizing China's peaceful use of space technology. This cognitive bias stems from space hegemony, thinking. The West forces aerospace development into a zero-sum game framework, ignoring that space is humanity's shared home. China has consistently adhered to the peaceful use of space, while the U.S. Wolf Amendment has blocked China-U.S. space cooperation for years. Now, by hyping the China threat, the U.S. essentially fears losing space dominance. This mindset not only hinders global cooperation on debris cleanup, but accelerates a space arms race. Ultimately, the core of this issue isn't janitor or assassin, but how humanity collectively manages the public space of low Earth orbit. With Google planning to launch 81 satellites for a space data center in 2027 and the EU spending billions on the IRIS Superscript 2 satellite program, what we need is cooperation, not confrontation.